Hello everyone, it is me Billy of Speed Force Productions and I am doing a new thing for the YouTube channel which is called Gaming Saturdays and for the first video on it I decided to do my top 5 games of 2017 and I'm also joined by my friend here Freetech Studios, how are you doing? I'm doing alright, I've been normal. <laughs> Okay, so basically we're going to treat this like how a normal top 5 would be, we would say our 5 favourite things. Unfortunately, we have not played many games of 2017. I mean, I've only played about 6 games from 2017. And I've played 5. Yeah, and he's only played 5, so we're only going to do, like, I mean, we thought most of those games were pretty good, so we're going to just do just top 5 games, so yeah. Yeah. Anyways, without further ado, um, yeah, just like we're just gonna do it as we do. So it might be a bit long because we're both talking about the games that we played and where we put them and why we think them this way. So yeah. Anyways, let's get to our first one. So, uh, do you wanna say your number five? Uh, my number five, which goes right at the bottom of them, is uh. Star Wars Battlefront 2. Okay, and what um, would that be? Um, I put it at the bottom. It's not the best. I like it would be better if you know the microtransactions will yeah be less microtransactions than normal because of the loot boxes, and they are the reasons why Belgium and all the other countries are going. Oh, loot boxes and stuff are gambling and everything. So yeah, blame that on uh, EA. So. <laughs> Is that is that the only thing that everyone actually hates about that game? Because other than that, I have not seen a, a, any like complaints on like anything like the story mode or like it, the, the game. Else. The game itself is okay. It's a it's a really good game. So but it's just the microtransactions were just just terrible. I I always hate it when there's always like that one thing that makes everyone hate it so much. Like it's mm. ha it's happened with other games like um. Uh, what, what game am I thinking of? Oh yeah, Sonic Unleashed. But like, that's my favorite Sonic game of all time, and like, majority of people don't like the game just because of the Werehog. And mm. the, like, that's kind of stupid. And it, yeah, and there's even people who think other games doing like one particular thing, and they definitely hate it. I I don't know many games, so I won't really know. Yeah. They're not in the competitive, though. So. Okay. Now, uh, I'll explain my number five. My number five will have to go to... Uh, it's really unfortunate for me. Sonic Forces. Okay. Now, when the game was first announced, I was mega excited because it was another Sonic game being developed by Sonic Team. I have been waiting since Sonic Lost World for a game by Sonic Team. Although, but with, I mean, we still had Sonic games coming out. Like, we had the mobile games, so like, um, the re releases of Sonic 1 and Sonic 2 on mobile by Christian Whitehead, those are just. those are definitive versions of the game. Legitness. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was also. Um, uh, there was the Sonic Boom games, despite people not really, like, having so much fond of Sonic Boom, I actually quite like the Sonic Boom games. I mean, I don't think of them as the best Sonic games ever made, like, they could have been better, they, there could have been some things that would have made them a lot better, but for the most part, I had an enjoyable time. Yes, mm. people who hate Sonic Boom, come oh. at me! I had, I had a good time as well, which is why it's kind of next to my number four. Oh uh, wait, hold on. Let me let me finish. Uh, I haven't finished. Um, uh. So yeah, when when we saw all the stuff with forces, I was getting really excited, and I was even thinking like, could forces become my next all-time favorite Sonic game? Like, could this be the game that beats Sonic Unleashed? And when I'm talking about Sonic Unleashed, I should have said this earlier when I mentioned it. I'm talking about the 360 and PS3 versions, not the Wii and PS2. Those are just not my not my taste. PS2 is terrible. 
Yeah, apparently, I think the PS2 version is like the worst of one, and, I, and when I saw like gameplay of it, I saw it as more like an alpha or beta version of the game. Mm. I, mean, I mean, that's just how I saw it, anyways. Um, yeah, so when the game finally came out, I was getting really excited. I finally played it. I mean, I got to play it on the PC before I played it on the Xbox One, and the PC version well, I, I still managed to beat the game, I didn't really have so much fun of the frame rate I was having because, I mean, I, I haven't got such a good PC. I mean, it is pretty good, like, it can run good, like, games really good, like, games like, um, Gary's Mod, Minecraft, and, uh, CSGO, those games, they, they just run perfectly, but games such as, like, Forces, Outlast, and most likely GTA 5. I mean, I mean, I haven't played that game, but I think GTA 5 would have suffered even worse in terms of like frame rate. But yeah, so when I finally got to play on Xbox One, I played it a lot. I even 100%ed the Xbox One version, and throughout the most part of me playing Sonic Forces. I was pretty much disappointed in what I was playing. I mean, there were some bits that were good, like like um, like uh, some of the modern Sonic stages. The custom hero was pretty good. In even the songs were good as well, apart from um, Capital City and the metro like the custom heroes Metropolis. That was. That was ugh, I don't like uh, it. the yeah the, the new one like the uh, one before the infinite battle it's terrible yeah that one like, um, when infinite kept on like changing the yeah like, yeah yeah that's stuff, the yeah, animation that's just I mean the, yeah. the I mean the extra stage itself was actually good I mean I like I did like that stage like if I was to go back and play that stage I would probably either like um just actually no I would just mute the TV, or if, or if the Xbox One actually had volume control, I would just turn off the music before I entered the stage. And I'll play something else. Something good, like maybe the Metropolis music from Sonic Heroes, seeing as it's apparently a reimagined stage. Yeah, it looks quite different. Anyways, and there was also the issues of like, say, there was like the story, like, it was, the story was quite disappointing, like, I mean, I actually had like a big prediction of what was going to be in the story, like, what certain things were going to happen, and most of the predictions I actually got correct. Like, when Eggman finds the Phantom Ruby, when Classic Sonic shows up, and what happens at the ending, which I won't say for anyone who doesn't want any spoilers. So... Yeah, for the most part, I was pretty disappointed with Sonic Forces. But I won't stop anyone else from playing the game, so if you want to play it, sure, go nuts. But if you're not really so fond of Forces, it's okay to skip it. Hmm. And I highly agree with that. And that's why I was on my, uh... Before! Yes, yeah, you number four. And my number four is Sonic Forces. I was okay. gonna... Uh, it's kind of... It's like Battlefront uh, 2, but kind of reversed, because microtransactions, there's no microtransactions whatsoever. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Um, so far. Wait, 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 wait. But... I just remembered something. This this was actually, this is, I mean, it's still quite a controversial topic at the moment, but it's not as controversial as it was, like, last month. But, um, you know the announcement for Supersonic DLC? Oh, yeah. Yeah, um... At one point, I think it was in one of the uh, Sonic YouTube channel's live streams, they, um, I think they pretty much, um, roasted, uh, EA for, like, the microtransactions thing or something. And, like, mm. but then, I think, I think it was a week later, it was the reveal of the Super Sonic DLC, and it, people were really just outraged finding out that when they pretty much just roasted EA for doing something that they pretty much did with the Supersonic DLC, which was... Um, okay, so the Supersonic DLC, that was pretty much, um... It was free for like a month. I mean, it's still free as of now. As as of like, we're, when we're recording this. 
but pretty much by the end of January it will be not free, it will be, you have to pay for it. And yeah, so they're pretty much doing what EA was doing, which is something that they pretty much roasted them on doing, so that doesn't make sense. Especially, uh, especially due to the American like, like advertising, it, it just doesn't make sense. Hmm. But uh, back to what I was talking about. Yes, you make into. Um, yeah, it was kind of yeah, like the graphics were alright, but like animations were terrible. Like oh, as on, the animation was like, that the bad. The cut, the cutscenes were okay, but it was the cutscene. But it's like the game, the gameplay of the animations. Like for example, when I said earlier about um, oh, the Metropolis bit, where um, Infinite kind of scrambles with gravity and everything. Yeah. Confuse me. Like, why does? Why is he just frozen and just turns like ninety degrees and just goes plops down? And I'm like. You do realize he's actually flipping the world upside down, so kind of like in that one stage in Sonic Heroes. Or yeah. even the other stage in Sonic Adventure 2. Oh, yeah. Um, and um, also, I did hear from some sounds, uh, some sound effects from Sonic Mania. Yeah, yeah. That was a Phantom yeah. Ruby sound effects. Yeah, it was, yeah. What I meant. And that's it's on my number four spot. It's 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 better than Battlefront, but it's 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 not bad. It's not good. That's what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. uh, my number four is Cuphead. The reason, yeah. Okay, first things first. I didn't know about Cuphead's existence until 2017 when E3 was around. That's when I first knew about Cuphead. I did not know about Cuphead's existence. I believe it was first revealed in 2014, according to some call me Johnny. At least that's what I heard from him. I don't know. I must have misheard him or something. Yeah. But, um, yeah. When I saw the trailer that was at E3 of 2017, I was surprised. Like, they were making a game that was centered around the 1930s or 1940s animated cartoons and I, I was sold because I love those kind of cartoons they're, they're like really great classics so like the Mickey Mouse cartoons the uh, the original Looney Tunes or um, heck even the original Tom and Jerry's before they were a cat and mouse yes they were originally humans I that really blew my mind when I found out that um, yeah every when I played it I I actually got the game late because I was struggling on trying to get the game because I didn't have enough, I didn't have like enough money to get it, and someone was actually kind enough to buy the game for me, and I give him my respects. I doubt he's watching this video, but if he is, I give him my respect. Uh, yeah, when I played it, I was not expecting it to be so difficult, like. Oh my god, the difficulty was insane. Like, they really pushed the difficulty with the game. It's, it, it is a good game, obviously. It, it's just, oh my god, it was so difficult, I just could not beat it. I actually haven't finished it, but I want to finish it, so then I could just like, like, yeah. Uh, the music, the music really captures like 40s or 30s cartoons. The animation is just spot on. Every single detail with the animation is just fantastic. I love it. Mm. Alright, so now we move on to number three. So what's your number three? Number three. I'm gonna go for Friday the 13th. Uh, oh, okay. The game. This is uh, uh, um, a good game. Uh, kind of came out early access this year, I think. Oh, and it? it's... Yeah, I think. I think it's not early access anymore. Hmm. Um, hang on, let me just. Uh... I actually thought the game was out yeah. the whole time. Yeah, it got it got it initially released on twenty sixth of May, which hmm. which is yeah, it, which is which is out of the early access. Um, and uh, um, it came out a bit too early in my honest opinion. 
Um, because I played it on the PS4 and mm, it's a bit the search were quite empty as as how, how I would say it. Because mm. the servers the servers were really, really empty. I couldn't find any games for like the first few days until the third day I after I bought it or something and right. yeah. It was kind of weird. <laughs> And when I started playing it, I found the game because of the perks. Uh, oh, what else? Um, J the Jason, the, all the other Jason, different types of Jasons. Because I've I've never seen Jason knock down a door with a spear, which is kind of weird. Wait, Jason with a spear? Yeah, Jason Boyd with a spear. It's and and one of like the. And this is the same Jason from the Friday the, yeah, the Friday the Thirteenth movies. Yeah, they're, oh. they're like, they're all Jasons are the same, but there's like different types. Oh, where okay. Like different types and everything, different appearance and, and everything. Um, yeah, there's like one with a spear, which I'm very confused because I'm like to myself, how how is he gonna break the door when he tries to get us or something? And uh, I don't know. But, what I can say is it is a really good game, um, and it's it has an offline mode. So if anyone wants to play, it, you know, yeah, go it's a go ahead. Hmm. It's, it's it's a pretty good game. Okay, so my number three is gonna go to South Park: The Fractured Butthole. Uh, but... hmm. Yeah. So in case anyone doesn't know, I love South Park. I, I consider South Park to be my favorite adult animated show of all time. And I've seen every episode, I've seen the movie, and I've played like the first ever South Park game, and I've even played The Stick of Truth, because The Fractured Butthole is a sequel to The Stick of Truth, and it, it takes place in between season 21 of South Park. Because there's like an episode in season 21 which takes place before, just like just before the events of the Fractured Butthole. So yeah, that's something. Um, a majority of the things that were in the Stick of Truth are pretty much existent here. Like, you get to be your own South Park kid. Um, you get to take part in either like different teams. That are in the stories, and it, it it still does the RPG elements. I mean, I'm not a big person on like RPG type of games, but Stick of Truth and Fractured Butthole, those are the types. Those are the types of RPGs I like to play. And yeah, so if you are a big person on RPGs, then you could pick this game up. And even if you're a South Park fan, you can pick up the game too. Alright, so let's enter number two, shall we? Yeah, okay, so my number two pick is going to be Cuphead. Okay, um, I, I picked Cuphead because it's a great game. It's a really, really good game. I'm really proud, uh, impressed with the, graphics, the soundtrack. I'm actually yes. um, very loving Floor of Fury, which is the top of my favorite soundtrack. Mm. Um, and um, it's uh, I've um, surprised that I actually won two awards at yeah. the Game Awards when when that happens. And um, yeah, that's good for the studio. Yeah, and since it's only their first game as well. Yeah, that, that's actually the most like surprising thing that this is the studio's first ever game, and they were really dedicated to. It. Um, the bad side of that kind of uh. That's, um, uh, that kind of made me doubt about the game is the difficulty and the delays they have. But um, I, about those delays, it's been bad if 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 never delayed the game. To be honest. Mm. And um, I mean, then again, the other companies like to do delaying on their games. So mostly like Nintendo, as like Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild, that was like delayed so much oh yeah that was yeah i think that was like 
one of their most delayed and, games of all and time. That, um, game of the year at the Game Awards as well. Yeah. Uh, but um, that. back to Cuphead. Yeah. Uh, like it was announced 2013. Oh, it was 2013. With, with, with game with gameplay, and they said it's going to re be released in 2014. So basically, from 2013, uh, well, not they start in the game in 2013, the game with some gameplay, and it's like no, 2014. And I was like, okay, that's cool, and then I realised it, it didn't get delayed about three, three times because uh, it went, it got delayed 2015, and then got delayed to 2016. And then got delayed 2017, which and then which was the final release. Hmm. And I gotta be honest, I feel sorry for those people who are waiting for such a long time for the game. But yeah, I'll be honest, too. those days were worth it because the game is remarkable. Yes. And that's why I put Cuphead for two spot. I mean, I, I actually thought you were gonna say the one thing you didn't like was the difficulty. I mean, seeing as it was considered as the hardest game of 2017. I don't know if it's a really hard game, but the difficulty, that's 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 a different story. Oh boy. That's that's a different story. Okay. <laughs> okay, now, um... Number two, for me... It's just gonna be a big surprise for everybody of how this one is at number two instead of a different position. Um, my number two is Sonic Mania. Oh. Now, I bet some of you are probably thinking, why isn't it at number one, seeing as I did love Sonic Mania? There is a good explanation for that, and you'll find out once I get to number one, which is not now, because I need to explain. Okay, so obviously before we knew about Sonic Forces, we knew about Sonic Mania, and Oh my god, when I saw the gameplay for that, the hype was real. Like, it was another 16-bit game. Something that we haven't had since... Um... 1996, when I'm talking about consoles. In a way, you could count the GBA, like the Game Boy Advance games, being 16-bit games, due to the way how they look. So I guess you could say that, but I don't know. Um, yeah. Yeah, the hype was so real. I played a demo at Summer of Sonic. I loved it. Um, I was so anticipated to play the game when it finally came out. And I finally played it. I played it on my Xbox because it came with the Collector's Edition. And the Collector's Edition is like the best thing I own in my life. It, I just love it so much, and it, I actually got the statue like next to me. I I always look at it. Yeah, it, it, I just can't stop looking at it. It, it mm. it's really powering. Anyways, okay. anyways, um, so yeah, when I finally played the game, I was so happy because I was seeing, like, oh, like there was there's a lot of good things like. Like, it, it really feels fresh, it feels new, it feels right, and, like, there's so much good stuff. I mean, I've already explained a lot of Sonic Mania in my review, so I won't go too in-depth with stuff. Like, Sonic was great, Tails was good, Knuckles was good too, uh, a lot of the stages that were in there were good, although I wish they didn't include some stages. Um, and... Yeah, it was. It's pretty much my favorite Sonic game of the 2010s. Like, hmm. I say the, the second. That's gonna have to go to Generations. So if if Mania wasn't as better than Generations, I would have said Generations is still my ten my favorite Sonic game in the 2010s. But Mania beats yeah. it. So yeah. And again. Hmm. I, I bet people are shocked I didn't put it as number one, but you'll find out what my number one pick is, like, after we've 
checked what free text number one is, and I think I already know what it is. So uh, yeah, so let's uh, let's uh, uh, yes, time for yeah, my let, let's go to number one, shall we? So what's your number one free tech? It's time for my number one pick, and yes, I'm gonna have my number one for Tony Hawk. No, 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 wait, it's not wait, Tony what? Hawk. It's not Tony Hawk. Wait, there was a Tony Hawk game this year. I mean, 2017. Uh, Oh, I was just joking. It's Sonic Mania. Hey. Okay, so you got someone with number one having Sonic Mania. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was a great game. I played it. I, I put it on the release day Station Four, um, which and it was actually pretty cheap, and hmm. I loved it. I know it was. I know it got delayed, but it didn't get delayed like, like an. an a large amount on like Cuphead, yeah. Because if Cuphead like got delayed in like a, such a short amount, that could have been that could have been my number one spot. But it has to go mm. to Sonic Mania because it was a number. Ooh, wait, it, it, wait, if if Cuphead was gonna come out in 2014 still, then it wouldn't have been on this list. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, continue. Yeah, <laughs> true. Um, but um, I, I give Sonic Mania my number one spot. It kind of gave me some flashbacks back to the old Sonic times. But in, in, but what kind of gives Sonic um, uh, main, the main blue blur uh, the the power is that that he has um, more blueness than the, like the original. More blueness than the original. Yeah, he's 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 more blue in the game. Oh yeah, he is, he is, yeah he is quite blue. As a matter of fact, that's actually my favorite looking sprite of Sonic in any of the 16-bit games. Yeah, and uh, that's why I'm giving Sonic Mania my number one spot. Okay, so now we finished with your number one, which was Sonic Mania. My number one. Is Metroid Samus's return? Well, wait, no, nice. Metroid Samus returns. Okay, now let me just make something clear. I am a newcomer to the Metroid series. Like, I I have played Metroid games. I mean, I've played Metroid Zero Mission, which is a remake of the first Metroid game on the Game Boy Advance. Like, the original was on the NES, but this is on. Game Boy Advance Zero Mission. Then I played Metroid Prime 1, and I actually haven't finished that. I've played, I finished Zero Mission, but I haven't finished um, Prime, so I should get around to finishing that game at some point. Uh, and the third game I've ever played is, in, in the Metroid series at least, is uh, Samus Returns, which is a 3DS game which is a remake of Metroid 2, which came out, I think, in 1991 on the original Game Boy. So, yeah, that was, that's actually, that was actually kind of a smart move going for that. And I actually remember seeing a thing from Son Call Me Johnny reviewing this other Metroid 2 remake, which was made by fans, which was taken down by Nintendo, because, like, copyright reasons. But Johnny also speculates just because after the release of uh, Samus Returns, he mentions in that review that Nintendo was most likely took it down because they were making a remake of their own. So yeah, yeah, that could have been that could have been it. But then again, seeing as they copyright other things in the past, it seems most likely because it was their property. Um, yeah, a lot of the stuff that I, I mean, I've seen gameplay of the original because of some Call Me Johnny's review on the original game, and. I was doing comparisons, and a lot of it is actually pretty, like, some of the stuff is the same, like, some of the stuff you get, some of the places you go, but it it looks like a much better game. You could either say the Metroid 2 fan game, like the remake that was, that was made by fans, or this 3DS remake is the definitive version of Metroid 2. I mean, I don't know, because I haven't played the fan game version, but... From what I've seen, I think I would have, I would have thought that or this 3DS remake is my favorite. And oh my god, I was having so much fun with Metroid's, with well, with this game. I was having so much fun. I love it. I mean, 
Sure, I would have loved Sonic Mania more because I am a big fan of the Sonic the Hedgehog series more than I am with the Metroid series, and I've been a fan of Sonic longer than Metroid. But, oh my god, Metroid was like a big surprise for me. I didn't expect it to be this good. I thought Mania was going to be sticking as my favorite game of 2017, but when I finally played Samus Returns, it just blew me away, it was so surprising, and, I mean, it was just phenomenal. Would I say it's better than any of the other games that I've played there in the Metroid series? For Metroid Prime? Yes, I will say that. But Zero Mission, I don't think so, because Zero Mission is my favorite game of all time now. Like, I think Unleashed was originally my favorite game, but then when I played Zero Mission, that just blew me away even more than what Unleashed did, so Zero Mission took my spot for best game I've ever played, and can, like trying to say like which game is better being Zero Mission or S Samus Returns, that could be debatable, but I don't know. So yeah, Metroid Samus Returns. My favorite game of 2017. Well played. <laughs> hmm. So, now we've finished the list. That's our favorite games of 2017. Huzzah. Um, what games are coming out this year? Um, uh, the one which I'm most excited for. I've been following that since Kingdom Hearts 2 came out. And uh, another game that I'm, that's coming out this year is Day Gone, which is a PS4 exclusive. Wait, what's the I game called again? Um, Day is Gone. It's kind of a zombie survival game. I heard zombie games are dying. Ish. Apparently, um, apparently people people believe that due to the how Dead Rising 4 wasn't so successful. Yeah. Hmm. Um, another for exclusive, um, I'm sorry for Xbox One users if I'm kind of killing you slowly, um, is Spider-Man. You son of a... Why did I get yeah. Xbox? And, uh, Why did yeah, I get uh, Xbox? A, a Spider-Man, I can't wait to play that when it comes out soon. Unfortunately, I, ha I have not pre-ordered it yet, but I will soon. Uh, I, 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 wish, I wish I could play that game. I mean, um, I, 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 ha I have played a PS4 because there's a shop that I sometimes like to go into when I'm on my breaks at college. They have like oh. a little PS4 section and they have a little PS4 you can play with and you can play demos. And the only game I've played from that was Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. Was and that it... a game? What? No, was it, no, game? it, was, it wasn't that game. Because I didn't... Have... I don't think the PS4 was even on. But yeah, the, oh. the, the shop I did go to, they did have the PS4 on, and I got to play Crash Bandicoot, so, yeah. Nice. I mean, me playing that game and me seeing some of the upcoming exclusive titles for the PS4, I kind of wish I went for a PS4 instead of an Xbox One. The only thing which is about Xbox One users is the fact they they have PUBG and we don't. Have what? Xbox One users get PUBG and we don't. What's that? Play on known battlegrounds. Oh. That was recently released. Plus, there's November. also the Halo games. That's another one. Or oh, even the rare rare games. That's another one. Yeah. But oh we, yeah. We, we... Oh yeah. Aren't they releasing that game that that's like where you're a pirate? Oh yeah. That. Ooh, I might get my hands oh, on people that. People still buying with that. Might get my hands on that game. Same here, maybe. You don't have Xbox. Hmm. But I can get it on PC though. Oh yeah, it's coming on PC as well. I forgot about that. Okay. Well yeah, so there's gonna be some games to look forward to. I might be playing less 2018 games than I did 2017, because like it's not often I usually like buy games. The most common games I usually would get is like a Sonic game. Or even if I see someone playing like a mobile game, I might give it a go. But other yeah. than that, I basically lack 
playing most games due to having like money stuff especially seeing as I have like some money because of Christmas and I'm trying to save that up for a Nintendo Switch uh. so yeah um, I guess we could just end the video off here of course okay so that is it for this video everybody I thank you all for watching and uh, if you haven't yet check out free check yeah. If you haven't done so yet, be sure to check out Freetech's YouTube channel, which will be in the annotations and at the link in the description, so you can go check him out. He does either live streams or he does videos. And yeah. is there any video that you have coming up that you would like people to check out? Um, I I have nothing to say. Um, but be to be sure to subscribe, and yeah, um, but I do have a Minecraft animation coming out soon. So yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Till then, take care. Bye bye. Don't don't don't. <laughs> and.